Drake versus Kendrick. Okay. Which one of them are building a meaningful institution for the black community? Answer my question. You ask me, what do I think about Drake versus Kendrick? Or Rick Ross versus Drake? Or Kanye versus everybody? My question is real simple. Which one of them is building a meaningful institution, a relevant institution for the black community anywhere on this planet? Help me out. You asked me about Drake and Kendrick. I'm asking you. Which one of them is building a relevant institution for the black community? In case you don't understand what I'm saying, I'm saying do not waste my time asking me to think about people who ain't thinking about us. Let me say it again. Don't ask me to waste my time thinking about people who are not thinking about us. You want me to say something about the Eminem situation? This is what I'm going to say about the Eminem goat conversation. My comments about Eminem never being considered the goat or any other non-African was not personal. It was not personal. Okay? It was about protecting the culture. That's all it was. And protecting our community. That's what that was about. Now, as far as all these rappers who made it their personal business to assume the role of Eminem's defense attorney, for all these rappers, so-called gangster rappers, who made it their business to assign themselves as Eminem's publicists in the black community, they all dishonored themselves. They completely dishonored themselves. They made a mockery of our culture the minute they started arguing that he was the GOAT. Because you will never in your life you will never in your life see another a person of another culture argue for an outsider to become the best ever at something they created. You will never see that. You will never see that. You will never see another people argue for an outsider to be considered the goat in something that they create. You will never see that. And what bothered me about all these so-called gangster rappers who felt the need to defend Eminem, you know what bothered me the most about these gangster rappers who felt the need to defend Eminem? I never saw any of them defend the black woman the way they defended Eminem. I'm going to say it again. Ladies, are you with me? i never seen a single one of these gangster rappers who went to war to defend Eminem with regard to being the GOAT. i never seen one of them defend black women like that on the internet or on an interview. That is what was most disturbing about the whole fiasco. That is what was most disturbing about the whole fiasco. They ain't never spoke up for black women like that. They ain't never spoke up for black women like that. But you will get on your knees and defend this Caucasian. Nobody tried to hurt him. Nobody threatened him. Nobody said he couldn't rap. Nobody said he didn't have a right to be in the industry. I simply said, and I am still saying, I simply said, and I am still saying, I simply said, and I am still saying that no non-African can ever be the goat at anything produced by Africans. I meant it. I mean it. And I stand on my square.
And then you had Negroes saying stuff like, well, what about basketball? A black man invented, a white man invented basketball. Ain't Michael Jordan the GOAT? Time out. You mixing apples and oranges. First of all, the jury is still out on whether they invented basketball because there's some historical information to the contrary. I said the jury is out on whether or not they invented basketball because there's some historical information out there to the contrary. Ifa Tunde three times. I said the jury is still out as to whether or not they invented basketball because there's some historical information to the contrary. But for the sake of conversation, let's say they did. For the sake of conversation, let's say they did invent basketball. Here's the question. Are most basketball players white or are most basketball players black? So even if a Caucasian invented the game, the sport is dominated by blacks. So because we have overtaken the sport, overtaken it, it would be ridiculous to say a white man is the GOAT. Furthermore, basketball is a competitive sport that has clearly defined terms of who is the best and who is not in terms of championships, scoring records, MVPs, and other accolades. No such thing exists in rap except sales. And you can't go off of sales because most rap music is bought by white people. You cannot go off of sales because most rap music is bought by white people. Furthermore, rap is not dominated by Caucasians. It's dominated by black people. So the same argument we make for hip hop is the same argument we make for the NFL and NBA. We dominated and therefore the GOAT can never be somebody outside of the culture. But I'm going to leave that right there. But to the hip hop community, I am so disappointed in you Negroes. After, after 50 years of hip hop, no institutions, no real programs, no systems to finance your community. And you close out the 50th year of hip hop celebration defending a white rapper's right to be called the best of all time. I want y'all to hear this. I need y'all to hear what I'm saying. After 50 years of hip hop, they close out the celebratory year. After 50 years of hip hop, they close out the celebratory year by defending a white man's right to be called the best of all time. I wish I could snap my fingers and gangster rap and all of its artists would disappear. Black community is better off without most of you. There are some exceptions to the rule, but most of you have not. If we look at the good you've done and the negative your music has caused, if we look at the good you all have done and the negative that your music has caused, I think we would agree that the community has suffered far more than they have ever benefited from you Negroes. I need y'all to stop hating on mixed race Africans. You cannot condone bunny hopping and hate the product of the bunny hop. Stop hating on my mixed race African brothers and sisters. You cannot condone bunny. The same people who will tell you you can't help who you love will hate on mixed race Africans. You are a walking contradiction. If you got a problem with the mixed race African, why are you supporting the bunny hop? If you have a problem with mixed race Africans, why are you supporting the bunny hop? What is this? It's crazy how the guy tried to convince me to date outside my race just for him to find an excuse to be with a snow bunny. Like I told him, we don't want it. We don't want him back. he been sent to jail twice because of his ex snow bunnies. And every time I tried to explain to him, he think, wow, y'all heard that? He went to jail twice. Snow bunnies got him locked up twice and he won't leave him alone. Did y'all hear that? He got sent to jail twice by the snow bunnies. 
and he still won't leave them alone. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Something about that ice man inheritance, y'all just can't give up. Something about that ice man inheritance, y'all just can't give up. Something about that ice man inheritance, y'all just can't give up. Wait a minute. Do we have any natural hair black women on here? Where my natural hair queens at? I ain't give a shout out to the unapologetically African organic sisters. Where you at if you natural? Natural sisters, can I see some hearts? Where my natural sisters at? Can I see some hearts? Where my natural sisters? If you all natural from top to bottom, head to toe, 100% all natural black woman, where you at? Where you at? Natural queens, where you at? All natural. Butter almond, butter pecan, sweet brown sugar, caramel, honeydew, cinnamon, nutmeg, pistachio. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Had to give a shout out to the all natural queens. I still love you, my process queens. I still love you, my process queens. But as the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey said, don't take the kinks out your hair. Take them out your mind. You can't come to the Conscious Singles Convention if you're not natural, by the way. The Conscious Singles Convention is only for natural sisters. If your hair isn't natural, you cannot come. Let me say it again because I don't want you to get disappointed when security turns you away. Let me say this right now, ladies. I don't want you to get disappointed when security turns you away. You, can, you will not be admitted into the Conscious Singles Convention, nor will you receive a refund if your hair is not natural. I'm going to say it again. For the sisters in the front, for the sisters in the back, for the sisters on the side, you will not be admitted into the Conscious Singles Convention if your hair was not assigned to you by God at birth. Let me say it again. You will not be admitted into the conscious singles convention if your hair that is on your head was not assigned to you by your ancestors at birth. If you don't have the hair assigned to you by your royal African ancestors, when you show up to the Conscious Singles Convention, you will not be admitted into the Conscious Singles Convention. Do you understand me? My dear brothers, that applies to you too. My dear brothers, that apply. Some of y'all got them extensions in your hair. No disrespect. No disrespect and no ditty. No disrespect and no ditty. No disrespect and no ditty. But for my brothers with the extensions, you not coming in either. I'm just keeping it a buck. I don't care if it's fake locks, my brother. You're not coming in there if you are wearing any hair that was not assigned to you by your ancestors at birth. It's that simple. We're going to do the Conscious Singles Convention. There's going to be workshops. There's going to be seminars. We're going to have elders talking about healthy relationships. And then after the Conscious Singles Convention, as a part of it, there will be a closing gala dinner after party where you can mix and mingle and do your thing. You feel me? Okay. But everybody must be natural. Everybody must. And by the way, black woman, if you think your husband is going to try to sneak to the Conscious Singles Convention, send me his picture. I'm going to put it up on the big screen and I'm going to ask everybody, if you see this man in here, if you see this thirsty Negro in here, please point him out. His wife is waiting at home. Black man, if you think your wife is going to try to sneak to the Conscious Singles Convention, send me her picture. I will put it up on the big screen and I will say, has anyone seen this thirsty sister? If you find this thirsty sister here at the convention, her husband is looking for her at home. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Is this true? Somebody just sent me something. I don't know if it's true. Somebody just, I'm going to read this. I don't know if it's true. Allegedly. Allegedly. Somebody just sent this. It says, let's meet the billionaire 
who's responsible for introducing the world to Sexy Red. His name is Ike Youssef. He's definitely an untouchable. He is the co-founder and president of Gamma, a modern media and technology company that aims to change how artists create, distribute, and monetize their content and brand. Youssef previously served as chief financial officer at Interscope Records, the world's largest music company. He also had experience. I don't think Interscope is the largest, though. He also had experience at Disney Strategy Group. He has an MBA from Harvard University, which is one of the colleges that Skull and Bones was founded. Allegedly, he introduced the world to Sexy Red. Allegedly, he introduced the world to Sexy Red. Allegedly, he introduced the world to Sexy Red. Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. I ain't got a date for Charlotte. Let me say this about the presidential election. Black people need to organize before it's too late. Okay, how do I book a consultation to discuss my 15-year-old? Uh, he's... Uh, well... Be careful with that. You can lose your children with that. I hate to say it, but because we elected Barack Obama and we let him push that agenda on our kids, if you try to remove the rainbow from your child's life, they can take your children from you in this country. If you try to take the rainbow out of your child's hand, they will take your child out of your home. So please be careful. Y'all heard me, brothers and sisters? Please be careful. I know some of y'all want therapy to deal with the rainbow situation with our kids but they will take the children from you it's our fault we let barack obama bring that stuff into the schools and we didn't say nothing to him about it it's our fault it's our fault we let barack obama bring that stuff into the public schools and we didn't say nothing about it it is our fault it is our fault what program on netflix Falasi Hive. What program, sister? You got to tell me what program. Have I seen what program on Netflix? What program? Is that a snow bunny? Uh, good after, Good morning, uh, Mrs. Lisa Crystal. How are you? Uh, can we help you? We were having an all African people's live. Is that another bunny? Uh, Miss Lisa and Miss Vicky, how can we help you? Welcome to the African Community Live. Uh, can we help you? This is a private members only chat. I would appreciate it if the two of you would uh, respectfully um, find your way back to the snow. Um, this is an all African people's family meeting, respectfully. I'm sure I could not walk into a family meeting for your community, so we would appreciate it if you didn't walk into a family community, family meeting for our community. So we appreciate you two for checking in. Uh, God bless the snow bunny and um, please find your way back to the ice. Uh, where were we? 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 I just forgot where we were. What were we just talking about, brothers and sisters? I forgot where I was. Another bunny. Wait a minute. There's a snow bunny attack coming. I just. Where are these bunny? Where are these bunnies is coming into my chat? What's going on here? Oh, man. It's a blizzard. Why is there a blizzard on my broadcast? Okay. Okay. 